Hello, hello, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. I am so ecstatic that this video is finally happening because I am officially in Taiwan. I'm here in Taipei. I just went to the supermarket, got some ramen for my lunch, and I'm in like shorts and a t-shirt, and it absolutely is not shorts and a t-shirt weather. It's actually really cold. I was having such a Brits abroad moment <laughs> just then. Everyone else, like local Taiwanese people are walking around in like coats and jackets. And I'm here in my like summer gear. In my defense, it has been really warm here. It's been like 30 degrees last week. And then as soon as I arrived, it's been like <laughs> really overcast and rainy. But you know what? I don't care because today I'm doing something really, really exciting. And I wanted to bring you guys along. So there is this bookstore here. I think it's called Eslite and it's in the Xinyi area, which is like a 30 minute bus from where I'm staying. And it's this 24 hour bookstore. So it's literally open all the time. It never closes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I read online that actually it is closing for good at the end of this year, at the end of 2023. They weren't able to convince their landlord to renew their license or something. So unfortunately this bookstore is at the moment slated to close at the end of 2023. So I want to make this video and I want to go and visit this bookstore because it may not even be there. Um, for much longer. I think that Eslite is like a chain of bookstores. I could be totally wrong, but I've been getting a lot of DMs from people saying I need to go and visit this bookstore. The second I posted on Instagram that I was in Taipei, everyone was like, this is where you have to go. And you know what? I will take that advice. I will. <laughs> this is what the people want and this is what I want. And so it's got to happen. I'm so buzzing. You might be able to tell. I really love it here in Taipei. It's been really nice so far. Um, my friends Jade and Kwok both live here, so I've got to hang out with them loads. I've made another video um, vlogging those little moments as well, so that'll be on my channel too. As you know, when I'm traveling, I try to read books by local authors, so this is the book that I have with me. It's Ghost Town by Kevin Chen, and this won the Taiwan Literature Award, but I'm hoping to find some other Taiwanese books as well, so we'll have an explore. But for now, we are gonna head to the bus stop and go to this 24-hour bookstore, and I can't wait. I'm the young vamp, you said, if you love me, you will listen to the song. And I could tell that you were serious, so I didn't tell you you were driving the wrong way on the interstate until the song was done. You felt like an idiot adding an hour to the drive, but it gave us more time to embarrass ourselves, telling stories we wouldn't tell anyone else. You said I might. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, like two weeks has passed <laughs> since I filmed the rest of this video, but I am a bumbling idiot and I accidentally deleted the clip where I showed you the book that I bought <laughs> in the bookstore. So we're doing it now. I had the best time in Taipei, in Taiwan. I was genuinely like, should I move? Should I move to Taiwan? This is my problem. <laughs> Every time I go to a new place, I just want to live there and want to stay there forever and ever. I'm not very good at like letting things go. So I had a really peaceful time in Taipei. I loved the city. It was so easy to get around. The food was incredible. Incredible, um, and it was really nice to catch up with friends who live there. So yeah, I had a great time. Now I'm in Japan. I'm in Kyoto. Alexa, play Phoebe Bridges Kyoto. Um, <laughs> these stairs <laughs> look so ominous. <laughs> they just lead to the upstairs of this house. We're staying in this like really traditional 
um, home in Kyoto, which is lovely. And that's kind of a good segue because I actually bought two Japanese books while I was in Taiwan. And I wanted to tell you about them, but first, I just wanted to let you know that today's video is very, very kindly brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the go-to platform if you want to build a website or start your online brand. It's really easy to get started, there's no coding required, which is music to my ears, because Squarespace has loads and loads of amazing and very easy to adapt templates. So you can use those as your starting point and then customize and make something that is completely unique to you and your brand. You can also let people get to know you a little bit better by using their blogging feature. There's also great analytical tools so you can see what your audience is really responding to, what people are clicking on, what people are clicking through, and then use your time efficiently by making more of that content that people are enjoying. Having my own website has been really, really useful for me in terms of my career so far, and so I highly recommend using this video right now as your kick up the backside to get started. Stop delaying if you've always wanted to make your website. Squarespace is the place you should be. And very excitingly, you can actually head to squarespace.com for a free trial to get a taste for it and give it a go. And then when you're ready to launch your snazzy new website, you can head to squarespace.com slash jackinthebooks and use the code jackinthebooks to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You lucky sausage. Let me know when you've made your website, send me the link because I am nosy and I want to look at what you create. <laughs> and now, on with the book haul. So Eslite was such a wonderful store. There was such a nice vibe. Everyone was sitting around reading. And the reason for that is because in Taiwan, um, books will always be wrapped in cellophane like this. But what's special about Eslite is that they have a sample of each book. So let's say they have a stack of this book and they're all in the wrapping. The one at the top will be a sample and that one is not for sale. That one is actively encouraging you to read it. And so people come to the bookstore and they can just sit and read, like they are actively encouraged to just come and sit on one of the benches, at one of the tables, and just read, which I think is so lovely. And the fact that those books can't be sold because they're not in the wrapping means that you don't really feel guilty for just sitting there and reading it. So um, I thought that was really, really lovely. And it meant that the vibes were immaculate. Everyone was just sitting around enjoying a good book. I went and joined them <laughs> because I was like, I want this too. And so I sat and read Ghost Town and I actually filmed a 30 minute live read along, which is also on my channel if you wanna go and check it out. But I have to say, they didn't have as many translated Taiwanese books as I was expecting. I kind of thought they would have a section of translated books from Taiwan, but they didn't have that. So I was kind of gutted about that because I was hoping to buy another Taiwanese book, but they did have an extensive selection of Japanese books. And of course, as you know, <laughs> I'm now in Japan. So I really wanted to buy some more of these. And so these are the two books that I bought. So let's talk about them. This is All the Lovers in the Night. And these I'm gonna start reading. I think I'm gonna read this one tomorrow. I'm currently reading a book called No Longer Human, but the second I finish that, I'm moving on to this book. Um, so I haven't taken them out of the wrapping yet because it's been quite good having them in my suitcase um, and knowing that they're protected. <laughs> Anyways, this is by Mieko Kawakami, who I'm just obsessed with. I've read her other books, Breast and Eggs and Heaven. This is the next book that she's published in English. I think that we have to wait until 2025 for her next book, which is going to be this like 600 page novel. So I've got to savor this because this is the last Mieko Kawakami I'm getting. For a little while. So this is All the Lovers in the Night, which I think is a stunning title. And actually I am going to have to unwrap this because I realise there's no blurb, there's just reviews on the back. Um, I can never forget the sense of pure astonishment I felt when I read Miyako Kawakami says Hariki Murakami. There's some really interesting and fascinating interviews where Kawakami interviews Murakami and it's just, that's so special. Um, I can't believe we get to be alive at the same time as these authors. Okay. <laughs> That was an exciting moment. Fuyuko is a freelance proofreader in her 30s. Living alone and unable to form meaningful relationships, she has little contact with anyone other than Hijiri, someone she works with. When she sees her reflection, she's confronted with a tired and spiritless woman who has failed to take control of her own life. Her one source of solace, light. Every Christmas Eve, Fuyuko heads out to catch a glimpse of the lights that fill the Tokyo night. But it is a chance encounter with a man called Mitsutsuka that awakens something new in her, and so her life begins to change. As she starts to see the world in a different light, painful memories from her past begin to resurface. Fuyuko needs to be loved, to be heard, and to be seen. But living in a small world of her own making, will she find the strength to bring down the walls that surround her? 
All the Lovers in the Night is a cute and insightful, entertaining and captivating, pulsing and poetic, modern and shocking. It's another unforgettable novel from Japan's most exciting writer. <sighs> sounds so wonderful. And I've seen this recommended so many times alongside other books that I also love. So that's always a good sign, you know? Then we have Diary of a Void. This is by Emi Yagi. And this was actually on offer. So reduced from 715 Taiwan dollars to 429 Taiwanese dollars. So by the way, we live, well, I say we live, we're like our apartment that we're renting is right next to a tram stop. So if you can occasionally hear the beeping from the level crossing, a tram comes like every three minutes. <laughs> so sorry about that. Okay, I'm struggling <laughs> to get into this, which hopefully is not my experience with the book. <laughs> oh, there's the tram. Do you hear it? <laughs> anyway, Diary of a Void. So tightly written and so much fun to read. And it's translated by David Boyd and Lucy North. Let me tell you what it's about. For the sake of women everywhere, Miss Shibata is going to pull off the mother of all deceptions. As the only woman in her office, Miss Shibata is expected to do all the menial tasks. One day she announces that she can't clear away her co-worker's dirty cups because she's pregnant and the smell nauseates her. The only thing is, Miss Shibata is not really pregnant. Pregnant Miss Shibata doesn't have to serve coffee to anyone. Pregnant Miss Shibata isn't forced to work overtime. She can rest, watch TV, take long baths, and even join an aerobics class for expectant mothers. But she has a nine month ruse to keep up. Before long, it becomes all absorbing. And with the help of towel stuff shirts and a diary app that tracks every stage of her pregnancy, the boundary between her lie and her life begins to dissolve. A prize-winning, thrillingly subversive debut novel from a new star of Japanese fiction. Diary of a Void will keep you tumbling... Oh! <laughs> Diary of a Void will keep you turning the pages to see just how far Miss Shibata will go. These books are gonna take me on a ride, I feel, and I'm very excited about them. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed getting to have a little glimpse at a Taiwanese bookstore. I've got some reading to do, and I've also got some exploring of Japan to do. So, I will catch you very, very soon in my next video. Thank you for watching this one. All the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.